my name is uh, Dr. Matthew Perry. I am owner and uh, physical therapist at Autonus Physical Therapy here in Scripps Ranch. And I'm uh, Kevin Grayson, a physical therapist at Autonus Physical Therapy. And we're happy to be here for, uh, what do we say, our fourth seminar? Fourth now? seminar so, here at the yeah, Racket Club. Glad to we're see uh, a lot of new faces and some old faces as well. Familiar so, ones, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And we have our wonderful administrative assistant back there, Sabra. Say hi to Sabra, everyone. Yeah. We'll put her on the spot. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like attention, so we're going to give her a little bit. <laughs> yes, and uh, welcome to the uh, Back Pain Seminar. Uh, we're very, very, very excited to uh, talk about this. We've been very excited for a long time. Back pain is something that most people feel at some point in their life. And uh, we work with a lot of uh, clients with back pain. So we're going to make sure that uh, this is very informative for all of you and uh, all of that. And if you haven't already, please um, sign in. Uh, what we're going to be doing after the seminar is we're going to be uh, sending a, a home exercise program that has some of the, uh, the exercises that we've covered today. Uh, and also, we're going to be sending a recording of this, so you don't have to necessarily take notes. You can if you'd like, but we'll be sending a recording after so you can review it, okay? Hey. Disclaimers, of course, we're here in California. <laughs> uh, presentation for educational purposes only. We have not evaluated most of you. <laughs> some we have. Uh, but, you know, if something hurts or you think something's going to be bad for you that we're going to be performing today, please don't do it, okay? Uh, make sure you consult with a medical doctor, physical therapist, whomever, prior to doing things that might, uh, might hurt us, okay? And seriously, please don't do something that hurts, okay? <laughs> Want to be, make sure we're clear. Yeah. And also, this workshop is being recorded. Um, as I said, we uh, send all of the uh, all the videos to to Tal to the Scripture and so Racket Club. They can do whatever they would like to do with them, and we also send it for all of the participants uh, who are here. So, before we get started, sorry for the blurry picture, but who here has heard of a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset? Okay, one person. Okay, a couple people. So, fixed mindset, intelligence is static, desire to look smart, those types of people avoid obstacles, avoid challenges, want to just look smart as opposed to learning. Whereas a growth mindset, intelligence can be learned and developed. It means that you are trying to, uh, to master a topic, not trying to look smart about it, but trying to truly master it learning from criticism and critiques, those types of things, and embracing challenges, which is the biggest one that we're gonna be talking about, okay? Challenges. Does this make sense to everyone? Okay, so for the purpose of the workshop today, I would love for all of us to have our growth mindset hat on. Please feel free to make this an informal workshop, ask questions, okay? And we'll do our best to answer them. And we're going to hopefully learn as much from you guys as you are hopefully going to learn from us. Sound good? Yes. Yes? Great. Great. And I'll just close this guy real quick. Okay, so the purpose of today, trying to identify the most common causes of back pain. There's a lot of different reasons why someone's back might hurt. Maybe it's not your back. Maybe it's somewhere else. Uh, trying to find an effective treatment for back pain. Some strategies and things to try to prevent injury as well. Okay. Us as a, a clinic, and I'm sure all of you like the idea of being proactive about something as opposed to reactive about something. Does that make sense to everyone? Being proactive versus reactive? We all want to get out of relief when our back, or out of pain when our back hurts. However, why don't we try to prevent that from happening in the first place or coming back again? And then obviously answering any questions that anyone might have out here. So the back, single leading cause of disability worldwide. It makes up for like 75 or 80% of workers' comp cases uh, and also disability, particularly with our aging adults. Although I've had chronic back pain um, in my life and I'm only 32. Um, li uh, years lived with disability uh, can increase uh, 
has increased 54% in the last 15 years. What do you all think could attribute to in the last 15 years the cause of disability with back pain or you know, people having more back pain? Um, or, We're getting older. The last 15 years. The last 15 years, time. <laughs> time. That's a great one, that's a great yeah. one. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know, uh, maybe it's because we're all doing a little bit more of what you all are doing right now, right? Sitting. I think that's a huge problem, and that's going to be a huge problem for people in generations younger than us because we are sitting more and more. Yeah. And also, 80% of the population will experience back pain at some time in their lives. I think that's a very conservative estimate. I'm thinking more like 95 to 96, but this is what the research is saying for now. And 50 billion dollars in healthcare costs each year. Billions, okay? It is a very debilitating thing, as we all know, because most of us who are here have experienced it. But don't you think as we grow older, we don't cut back like we should? What we did 20 years ago, we think we can still do now. I think that's the, um, that, that can be true for a lot of people, but personally and clinically, I typically see the opposite. People are doing much less than they were doing. Rugby? Am I still playing rugby? No, I'm not. I do touch every now and then. Touch rugby every now and then, but no more time. <laughs> but it, exactly that, right? You know, life, families, you know, other things get in the way, and then we go to try to bench press like we used to bench press or lift something, and... Uh, we're just not accustomed to it anymore, deconditioned, as they say. Um, but I do think age, you know, is, uh, it's a very complex thing, and there are a lot of age-related changes. But when it comes to strength and muscle, we can still build as we get older. Okay? We'll, we'll dive a little bit more into that as well. That's a great question. All right. Okay. So we're just going to kind of get into just a little bit of anatomy of the spine. Maybe we can pass around the spine model if anyone wants to take a look at that. Um, so just looking at the bony anatomy here, again, we have the vertebrae and what we say here is a facet. So a facet is the joint that you see right here um, where each vertebrae interacts with the vertebrae above and below it. Okay, so that's how we flex and extend and move our spine is those joints, um, in addition to a little bit of the disc as well, but that's part of the bony anatomy there. Um, now, as far as the muscles, bunch of muscles attached in the spine, right? We have our multifidus, our quadratus lumborum, transverse abdominis. We'll go into detail on these a little bit more in the next few slides, but um, a lot of muscles there are really mostly stabilizer type muscles, right? Our, our hips and our glutes and these other big muscles are the prime movers. And um, these muscles are a little bit more of the, the stabilizers of the spine, okay? And obviously we see that yellow thing there, that's the spinal cord, and where it exits here is a nerve root, and that's where we often have a lot of um, issues that can arise, and you can see it on that model as well. So any questions just about kind of that bony anatomy there? Who here has been told that they pinched a nerve or felt that they pinched a nerve? One, two, three, few people. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty common thing. So when they say that, typically that's just a little bit of irritation here on this nerve root. Okay. Yeah. You can get a little pinched. Is that the same as an inflamed? Yeah, it, it, absolutely, it absolutely can because, you know, that, and I think inflamed is probably a better descriptor of that because you can't really, like, what is pinching a nerve? <laughs> pinching a nerve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's much more of an inflammation and a uh, kind of irritation um, of that nerve. Mm -hmm. Great question. Okay. Um, so again, a little more anatomy here. Obviously, we have the whole spine listed here. So we have our three portions of the spine, and then we have the sacrum and the coccyx, which is your tailbone. So we're kind of looking strictly at lumbar today, but obviously you see we have a lot of vertebrae there. So... Um, this picture on the right here. Now, this muscle here is that quadratus lumborum. So see how it attaches to each level in the lumbar spine. So it, it's a very important muscle. And a lot of times in times of injury, it actually goes into spasm. So who here has had a back spasm before? So quite a few people. So 
that is often one of the culprits. And another culprit, again, is the multifidus muscle, probably one of the most important muscles in the lumbar spine. Again, you see it runs every single level of the lumbar spine and it provides a lot of stability and kind of compressive force, which again, stabilizes the spine. So um, when you have times of injury and it pulls tighter, your spine is even more compressed and it's like, oh, I can't move at all. So um, a lot of times in treatment, we'll work on just reducing the spasms of those muscles. Okay. Any questions? Oh, go ahead. I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I always have questions. Who here has felt that stiffness first thing in the morning? Yeah, Everybody. including myself, yeah. actually. <laughs> so what that is, uh, typically, is that quadratus lumborum being very, very, very tight. Okay? And you really have to work on loosening it. That's why people you know, do you know, this kind of stuff. There's more specific things that can be done. But uh, just as an illustration, that stiffness and tightness that you experience is from yeah. that muscle. Okay. Yeah, any more questions it's just about kind of anatomy, bony anatomy, muscle anatomy? Okay. So we just want to go through a couple of the types of injuries. So um, first things first, up here we have a herniated disc or a degenerative disc disease. Has anyone heard of this before or a bulging disc? Has anyone been told they have a herniated or bulging disc in their spine? Okay. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Um, so again, the difference between a herniation and a bulge um, is a herniation is actually, so we have the annulus, which is the outer ring of the disc. We actually get a tear in that disc and it starts to leak some of the fluid. So a little bit more severe than a bulge. Um, now a bulge, as we'll see, talk about in a little bit, is actually kind of normal for most people. It kind of happens over time as, you know, just with age, we start to get some of this degenerative disc disease. We lose some of the height of the disc and some of the fluid in the disc, which can lead to bulging and other things. Um, as you see here, what's that disc pressing on right there? The nerve. So when we talk about a pinched nerve or some, having that nerve inflammation, or you know, pain kind of going down the leg, you know, a lot of times it's caused by a disc or something pressing on the nerve um, where it exits the spine there, okay? Um, other types of injuries we have listed here, we have sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So that's your SI joint. A Little bit different than the lumbar spine. So our sacrum, it's where our sacrum kind of meets up with our pelvis, okay? So has anyone had sacroiliac or SI joint pain? Okay. Good. So that typically is pain that just kind of is straight in the sacrum, so it often, or in the SI joint. So it often gets kind of um, mistaken for, uh, or we sorry, we often mistake low back pain for SI joint pain because it's kind of referring from the spine into the SI joint. But there certainly is a lot of SI joint uh, dysfunction out there, um, just a little bit different, and there's need some kind of diagnostic tests to um, differentiate the two. Okay. Um, and then, has anyone ever heard of spinal stenosis or spondylolisthesis? Okay, anyone been told they have stenosis? Yes, yeah. So stenosis is just a narrowing of the space where the nerve roots exit. So, and again, that would be this area here where that bulge is, but instead of a bulge being there, it's essentially that hole where the nerve exits has gotten smaller because of excess bone growth or a bone spur. Um, and then there's also central stenosis, which is actually um, a narrowing of this canal, which is where the spinal cord is, a little bit more serious than lateral stenosis, because now we're pressing on the actual cord. So um, that's something that would give you symptoms on both sides. Okay. Yep. Foraminal? Yep. So sorry, uh, foraminal, that's, um, they call this area the, for the lateral foramina. So where that nerve root exits to the side is the lateral foraminal stenosis, okay? And then central stenosis is the center where that spinal cord runs up and down, okay? Yep, question? What effect does osteoporosis or osteopenia have on any of that? Good question. So osteoporosis or osteopenia, again, we're going to have um, a loss of bone density, right? So what happens is we can get you know, some more compression so we can start to lose that disc height and that stability because now the bone is actually shrinking a little bit, okay? So, and that can cause, again, lead to more bone spurs, 
leading to more stenosis and just changing of the bony structures of the spine. Um, does that make sense? Okay. And then spondylolisthesis is kind of a, just a more severe, um, again, that is where we have a slippage of a vertebrate. So typically it happens in the lower lumbar spine, L4 or L5, and it's when one of these vertebra actually slides forward. Oftentimes it's a posture thing, so maybe it's over time we had a lot of posture here, you know, and then that vertebrae kind of started to slip forward a little bit. And that causes, you know, a number of issues, stenosis, disc injury, or a possibility of a fracture. So um, any questions about any of those types of injuries? Okay. Side or on the spine itself? I'm sorry, say that again? It's sacroiliac. Oh, sacroiliac. So again, sacrum, um, does anybody have that spine model? So it's a little bit to the side, right? So if we look at this model here, again, this is our lumbar spine, okay? This is our sacrum. Now, what's missing here is the pelvis. So this is our sacroiliac joint right here, okay? So pain is often felt just off to the side. So if this is the center of my back, the pain is often right here, kind of on that bony process there. Yeah, <laughs> it could, could be low back related though as well. So, but again, there's tests we can do to kind of differentiate uh, the two, okay? Great question. Any other questions about that? Okay. So real quick, we wanted to go through this uh, study. I love this study. So this is a, a chart that's showing percentage of abnormal findings on a lumbar spine, um, MRI and CT images in healthy, pain-free subjects. So everyone who was in this study did not have any pain at all. So we have our age groups here. Um, now looking at our 80s age group, we have 100% of this population had disc degeneration. None of them had pain. Okay, then we go down, disc bulging, you know, close to 90%. You know, here we have facet degeneration, again, close to 90%. Now going down even into the 60s, you know, look at the percentage of people that have disc degeneration, disc bulging, even disc protrusions. None of these people had pain. So this is just kind of bringing home the point that, you know, you are not your MRI, so just because there's all these changes occurring in your spine and your body, doesn't mean it's causing pain or discomfort. So a lot of times people kind of get rushed into certain treatments because you know, they might have back pain, they go to the doctor, they get an MRI, oh my goodness, you have the worst degeneration I've ever seen, but it could be something as simple as a muscle spasm, okay? So um, I just wanted to drive that point home. Any questions about that? It's, it's this whole correlation versus causation thing. Just because yeah. someone takes a picture, an x-ray, MRI, whatever the case is of your back, that is a brief moment in time, right? We don't know what happened even a second before that or a second after that. For all we know, you could have had this disc degeneration, you know, way in your 20s, 30s, for all we know, right? And I'm not saying that people aren't maybe protruding or herniating their discs, you know, by working in the garden. But just because you have back pain does not necessarily mean that um, this is causing that back pain. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it certainly, you know, it could, having some of these changes obviously does increase your risk a little bit as far as with certain movements. If you're moving incorrectly, you have a disc bulge, you know, you can aggravate that. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need a surgery like a disc replacement to fix that, right? We maybe just need to work on moving correctly and engaging the right <laughs> muscles, okay? All right, let me get this one. And so this is one of my favorite charts <laughs> and graphs. Um, what this is, is uh, it was really great. They did a, it's called an um, EMG study where they took an actual rod and probe, put it into these people's third uh, lumbar disc and evaluated how much pressure was into that at various positions, okay? So uh, don't get too bog bogged down with, you know, the X and Y axis too much. Just see the graphic in different positions, right? So 
you're laying down, and so that's what, maybe 25% laying down on your back, 75% uh, load into that disc at, um, uh, in that second picture, so on and so forth. But what I wanted to illustrate, and yes, please feel free to take pictures and all that. We cited it, right? I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> um, this position, okay, and for everyone who can't see, that's this, lifting something, okay. And we're gonna put Dan on the spot. The position he's in right now is this <laughs> position. <laughs> the, the worst, worst one, one yeah. right? The absolute worst one. But we all go into that position at some point um, in time throughout the day, and it doesn't mean it's bad, it just, you need to be aware of that you shouldn't be in that position 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week. How come right? all the walkers are to bend over like that? Great question. The, question. the question for everyone was, uh, why, why do a lot of the walkers cause you to bend over like this? We've all seen that in some people and, and things like that. Um, one, typically the walkers are ill-fitted. They're what? They're, they're, they're not fitted correctly to the person. And actually, Kevin and I did a, uh, uh, just as, as a side note, a presentation at an uh, outpatient ortho, um, orthopedic surgery clinic. And we were training the nurses on all kinds of things. And we were about to gloss over it and say, oh, you know, you guys know how to like, fit the canes and fit the walkers, right? So we don't have to talk about that. They're like, no, we never got any training. And so it's like, OK, <laughs> they're the first people meet, meeting you after surgery. And it's nothing on them, not a reflection on them, but there is a gap in their, in their training processes because we should be bringing people into a position uh, where we're a lot more upright. Okay, you don't want to be up here because that's going to cause other issues, uh, but definitely not down here. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, I'm not sure why we're not doing more training in that area. Yeah. Matt, from that chart, you might have assumed that Sitting and walk, it's better to sit with your back straight up like that? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So um, third from the right uh, here, that's that what we would call, you know, proper sitting posture, right? Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as I started talking about posture, everyone's posture improves. So <laughs> what you guys are in now. Yeah. Um, as far as sitting positions, that's the least uh, mm -hmm. pressure into your low back. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Um, you know, like lazy boy chairs, yep. where you're more like that. That picture's not up there. Is that have, have they checked that? That isn't up there. That's a great, uh, great point, and something I hadn't thought of before. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it. What I would say is, how do you feel in that lazy boy chair after sitting in that for about well, so three, four great. hours? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> feel great. Feel great. Yeah. <laughs> right, watching TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's comfortable. Um, however, at least what I feel is a decent amount of pressure into my back. Uh, so that wasn't measured in this study, uh, but that's actually something they should, um, they should look into. Yeah, um, and my, my guess, and don't quote me on this, but I, I think it would be somewhere definitely less than a few of these. Again, your feet are a little more elevated, yeah. um, so you know, a little bit less stress than sitting, but not as ideal as you know, lying flat as far as load on the disc. Um, so another position that is common, which actually I think has been studied in the past, is we call it hook lying position. So lying flat with your feet up um, would probably, in my estimation, would be a little bit less stress than even this uh, lying flat position. So it's really kind of unloading um, the disc and the low back. Okay. Good question. Great questions, everyone. The second one there, is that showing that you're better to lay on your left side or is it right? It's just on the side. I'd have to go back and look at the study if it was le left or right side. Yeah, I think it's just the just, side. Yeah, I think it was just either one. There was no specific Sometimes side. Left the mm -hmm. Yeah. So certainly for, for heart and lungs uh, and like lung drainage, there are certain sides that would be more beneficial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just kind of continuing on types of injuries, now we're getting more into um, the muscles and ligaments. And so what's not really shown here is the ligaments, but we have more of the muscles down in the hip. And the reason we show this picture is we really wanted to show 
Um, this guy right here, has anyone heard of the sciatic nerve before? Has anyone had sciatica, sciatica in the past? Okay. Um, so what is sciatica? What is it? <laughs> Anybody want to take a stab? <laughs> Doesn't feel good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pinch on the nerve. Okay. Great answer. So it, it's really a blanket term. Right, sciatica gets kind of, um, I would say, overdiagnosed. Anytime people are having all low back pain or pain down the leg, it's, that's sciatica, right? But really, um, the sciatic nerve is a bundle of nerves that exits um, through the gluteal muscles down into the leg, and it's combined of all those spinal nerves, right? So from you know all the lumbar spinal nerves and some of the sacral nerves, actually group together after they exit the spine into this big bundle and they go right under this muscle here which is called the piriformis. So anyone know about the piriformis or have been told they have a piriformis issue? Um, so a lot of times it even just a tight piriformis can lead to sciatica because it's going to push down on that nerve um, or an irritated sciatic nerve can lead to a tight piriformis and feeling really tight in, in the glutes there. Okay. So um, really just wanted to drive that home there. It's, it, again, it can be inflamed from the spinal nerve root. So we talked about a pinched nerve uh, a little bit ago. Now that might give you some symptoms down the leg that feel like sciatica, but really it's coming from maybe something that's pinching that nerve like a disc bulge. Okay. Now there are certain cases I've seen just like somebody had a a bad almost hamstring strain that was actually just a, it pulled on the sciatic nerve and they had a nerve injury. So that would be more a strict sciatic nerve injury. Um, but a lot of times it's coming from that lumbar spine causing those symptoms down the leg, okay? Um, so muscle ligament, again, we talked about those muscles like the QL and the multifidi. Um, now if we're getting down into the glutes, we have our gluteus medius our piriformis, and then some of these deep hip rotators, um, which don't get a lot of attention um, because they're, they're deep in there and very small, but they do a lot of, a lot of work as well. Um, and then other injuries, we just talk about infection, tumor, and I already mentioned that uh, piriformis syndrome. Okay. Any questions about any of those types of injuries? Next one. Okay. There we go. Yeah, no, wait, wait. yeah. Oh, move so, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, move it. That's fine. We can. Um, oh, we can do this. So, we've explained all of the different symptoms that could be happening in your back. What do we do about it? All right. Uh, that's what I'm sure most of you are here for. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, let's talk about the core for just two seconds and then we're going to talk about activating our core. Uh, what is the core? Please. Spine. Spine, okay. Everything from the chin to the hips. Yes, I like, really like that answer. Uh, any, any other thoughts on what the core is? Oh, come on. You're all thinking it. I think yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> our abs, right? Um, so our core, uh, as uh, was said, is really, you know, from here, maybe even higher, to below your feet. <laughs> um, it, re it really is. All of it plays into into it. But, however, um, uh, when we're talking about just what we would typically call the core. It is our abs, okay? We have abs, abdominal muscles going this way, okay, this way, this way, this way, all over the place. What a lot of people don't talk about, though, is that we have a connection with those ab muscles that go around into our back muscles. So when you're bracing and turning on your core, in this instance, what you're doing is creating almost like a, a weight belt. Okay, you see the construction workers, you know, who are lifting heavy things wearing that? That's all fine and good to, to wear something like that, but we have a better one and a more customized one within our own body, okay? So it creates this ring. And then the other things we're gonna talk about is your diaphragm, which is your primary muscle of breathing in. It's your ceiling of your core. 
floor. A lot of women uh, know about the pelvic floor, right? Um, and hopefully men too, because it's important in all of us. So what we're doing when we're bracing our core is we're creating this ring, we're creating this ceiling, and we're creating this floor. So why I have this soda can here as an example is that we are now creating almost like a shaking can of soda. You know when you try to press on it in any direction, it kind of pushes back at you? At you? That's what we're trying to do with our body. We're trying to make it almost a solid structure. Not a rigid structure, but a solid structure. Okay, like this. Okay. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? Okay, great. Well, what are we gonna do about it now? <laughs> um, so, what we'll do first is talk about core activation. Okay, so ignore what's on the screen right now. Let's just um, worry about this. Everyone uh, sit in your best posture. Remember, not the one on the far right, the, <laughs> the next one, good posture. Okay, great, great, great. And so, I don't want you to think too much about sucking it in, pushing it out. What I want you to think about doing is just bracing, bracing from here. Can everyone hear how my voice changed just a little bit as I braced, okay? Like, you know, someone's gonna flick you in the stomach or something like that, brace. That's what you're yep. trying to do. You're trying to tighten it, okay? Um, I'm trying to be mindful with my words because I don't wanna to be too leading because everyone's like, oh, you gotta like suck it in. No, 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 you gotta push it up. No, you have to brace. It's different, okay? Mm -hmm. So I just want everyone to kind of feel that, hold that for maybe five seconds and then relax. And then we'll go into it again. Good, and relax. Okay, uh, Dan, would you mind if I picked on you a little? Again? <laughs> Again. Good, all right, no, 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 you can stay right there. Um, and I want you to brace for me. Okay, Dan does a great job at bracing here. But what I'm seeing, did everyone see as he braced, he went back like this? Let's try it again. Yeah, he kind of went back a little bit. What I'm gonna ask him to do, do you mind my touch? Go ahead. Okay, brace. I want you to draw those ribs down just a little bit. Good, while holding, while holding. Good, just like that. Feel okay? That's a difference. Yeah? It is the, yeah. Yeah, what are you feeling? Tight. 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 Good, good. Exactly that, okay? So I want everyone to, uh, to brace, and then I want you, you can even put your fingers here, kind of uh, right here on your ribs. Mm -hmm and bring your ribs down just a little bit. Just kind of facilitate that down while holding, okay? Everyone feel just a little tighter or whatever you know, language you'd hips, like to use behind that? Mm -hmm. Bringing it down like so. I can really feel that on the back. Like a stretch? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're getting Dan out of a position that he's normally in like this for you know, at whatever degree that is into a nice neutral spine. That's a neutral mm -hmm. spine for us, yeah. okay? We haven't even talked about tucking our tail and you know working on the floor, but this is now the middle and the ceiling that we're talking about. Is everyone kind of getting what uh, what we're talking about? Making sense? Please last time to ask questions if you have them. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and so, yeah, now we'll go into a piriformis stretch. I'll, I'll, I'll have you, I'll have you back teach it, and then I'm going to add in another thing. Okay, cool. So, um, and this is a little bit different. We're obviously, we're doing a stretch here. So I'll demonstrate this seated. It's usually the best place to do it. And again, if this hurts or if you have issues with the hip, just be you know, cautious here or kind of we'll come around and make sure to correct some people. So what we're doing here, again, everyone, I want your good posture. So sitting up tall, you're going to take one leg and bring it on the other one, right? So now if this is too difficult, then we'll, we'll pause on this and we'll come around and kind of help you out. Now in this position, what does everybody feel? Do you feel lower, a stretch in the back of your hip? Okay. If you don't feel a stretch, you might have, you know, pretty good mobility. And then what you can do is actually lean forward a little bit, not rounding your back, just kind of hinging. You'll feel more of a stretch, okay? We'll typically hold this about 15 seconds or so, and then relax, and then we'll go ahead and flip around and do the other side, okay? So this is stretching that muscle right where that sciatic nerve runs. 
Okay. When I said I was going to add a little something, I want Kevin to go back into that position. Okay. And before he comes forward, I now want him to turn on his core and lean forward. Okay. Big stretch. Big stretch. I want everyone to see if they can try that to whatever degree they can and feel comfortable with. So what we did before with the core, okay, along with that stretch okay. and see what you feel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're gonna, so order of events, cross the leg however you can, turn on the core, lean forward. Feel a slightly different type of stretch than before you were doing that? Good. 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 Yeah. Again, that's creating that rigid structure up here to then get a deeper stretch down here. Do you hold your core tight while you're doing that? You absolutely yeah. can. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But are you supposed to? You should hold your core all the time for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm partially playing, but I am, you know, uh, partially serious as well. I was a little serious face, I know. <laughs> I thought I could have a little fun. Uh, well, when, when we turn on our core, we don't, it doesn't have to be this 100% thing all the time, although that's probably what it feels like right now while you are, are all learning. Ideally, well, like while I'm standing right now, my core's on, we'll call, call it 5%, 10%, okay? Uh, however, when I go and lift, something like this table, then it goes up to maybe 50%, right? Or 75%, okay? But the more we do that and the more we practice it, the more or the less often we're going to have issues like when we sneeze and throw out our back mm -hmm. or pick up that piece of paper and our back goes out. Has anyone experienced something like that before? Yeah, absolutely, a lot of us have, okay? So, uh, so seriously, you know, if you, the more you can have it on, the more it's just going to become second nature for you. Matt, you said hold it for about 15 seconds. Is it better to hold it longer if you could, or does it make any difference? Uh, so if you're doing like an exercise, like think, you know, thinking about it, uh, I would say maybe even five seconds, maybe 10 seconds, hold it, and then let go, right? You know, count up to 10 seconds. And then do it again? And then do yeah. it again, yeah, kind of do repetitions. But for us, at least, as functional physical therapists, you know, we're not just looking to make sure you can do that well while you're lounging in that chair, right? We want to move that to function, to now being able to brace that, lift up something, put it back down with good quality. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so it always has to translate into, into something bigger, unless you want to be a, you know, seat, sitting champion or something like that, you know? Um, which most of us don't want to do. We want to live our lives relatively pain-free, right? Yeah. Want to do the tilts? Yeah, so our next one we have up here is just a posterior pelvic tilt. So we can do this in multiple positions. Since we're all sitting, we'll try it there first, and then maybe we'll do standing. But it's also a good one to do, you know, lying on your back, okay? So if I'm standing, what it looks like here, again, we're tucking our pelvis kind of underneath. So if we're rotating it back this way. So it's squeezing the glutes, tucking underneath, and then relaxing, okay? Now if I'm sitting, again, we want to have our good sitting posture, okay? And then we're going to, you know, squeeze and then back, right? So you're squeezing your glutes. Now if you feel like you're having a difficult time doing that, then we'll kind of work on standing while we do that, okay? Yeah, kind of think about squeezing your butt almost like you had to yeah. go to the bathroom. Yeah. All right. yeah. That's the best so example. So it's kind of the opposite it. of arching, right? So if you arch your back yeah. a little bit, you kind of flatten it into the back of the chair. Okay? Uh, well, something's coming forward and, and again, something's going like back. Just like when you so did that your ribs butt, to hips, I guess it's technically it's coming kind forward. Of getting us into a more neutral But your back spot, is pressing more okay? into, the, into the back of the seat. Does that make sense, yep. Kirk? So your glutes could, should yeah. kind of drive that motion, right? They yeah, do that a little exactly. bit at the tilt, okay? Exactly. Is everyone okay. kind of getting what we're... That's feeling okay. What we're saying? This one feels a little awkward. Um, so then why don't we all stand up if you feel comfortable and we'll try it there. 
okay? You might feel this might feel a little easier for some of you. And I like to put my hands on my hips when I do it, because then you can really feel yeah. kind of what you're doing, okay? Hands on your hips. A little bit of arch, and then you squeeze the glutes, okay? Here. Good. And really feel those glutes working. Right. Yep. That's How's it going over here? Feeling the glutes? Broke. Feel like you got that movement? Yeah, okay, here we go. Like this. So that's the arch, that's the reverse of the motion, okay? And it's there, all right? So tuck in my tail between my legs. This is his back. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, if something hurts, you don't have to, you know. Um, I mean, as you can kind of see, like this does help drive some core activation, right? So if I get into that little bit of a posterior tilt, I'm in a great position for my ribs to be down. Now, if I'm arched, look where my ribs are. They're flared up here. So here is that more neutral, stable position. So now we're adding in everything that has to do with the core. Holding yeah. here, bringing the ribs down, and then tucking into that posterior pelvic tilt. And now you're in a position where you can move efficiently and, and adequately. Good. Okay. Great. Great job. And then while we're standing, we'll move into our last movement. Okay. So now we're going to do a little bit of a hip hinge while activating the core. And we should feel the glutes working a little bit here too. So we won't sit all the way down unless you feel comfortable doing that. But you're going to have that good standing posture. You get a little bit of that tilt, engage the core, and then keeping everything stiff up top, reach your butt backwards toward the chair, and then come back up, squeezing your butt on the way back up, okay? So this is a little bit of a hip hinge here, okay? And bend your knees just a little Good. bit more. The knees bend kind of by <laughs> sitting back. Yeah, there you go. Again, so try not to bend your knees too much. Yeah. Think about getting your hip and your butt back towards the chair. Straight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Straight. And, and as I come down, the angle of my body changes, yeah, right? But everything's straight. straight. What? Does that make oh, sense? Yeah. No, it's really tendon stretch. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can bend your knees a little bit and then kind of get your butt back. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great, um, um, a great thing. Yeah, that's going okay. Uh, kind of trying to get people to do is engage a little bit more of their glutes because Very good. if I... Is it okay? It depends on how you sit down and stand up, of course, right? And so if I'm controlled in that position, that's fine, but um, if I really just went... We're not really going into the upper back a whole lot today. Um, I'm not using my muscles at that point. Right? in the future or, for like neck and upper back. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That? <laughs> that's a shoulder exercise. <laughs> Yes, it has to be with good, good control. Everyone feeling right. okay with that movement? Yeah. Good. So this is a great movement to master. Again, when we go to lift something, especially deep off the floor, this is that position we want to be in, right? I don't want to be here, because that's where you know, my back's going to go out, right? So I want to be in that stiff spinal posture as I go to pick that object up, whatever it is. For me, it's a 50 pound three year old, so. <laughs> I need 100% core activation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I know, I know some of y'all probably have grandkids too, so again, this, when you go to lift somebody up or lift something heavy up, this is what we wanna do because that, that is a lot of load, right? Yeah. And then they're wiggling around like crazy too. <laughs> All right, well, we can go have a seat. Let's um, do a couple more points and then we'll put someone on the spot and have them lift the. Uh, okay. Um, I think it's kind of the end though. Can we go back? Okay. Touch back a little bit. Yeah. Go back to the core one. There yeah. We go. Cool. Okay. So um, restoring a wide range of motion and decreasing muscle tightness is absolutely in importance, okay? Some people have issues or pain when they extend. Some people have issues or pain when they flex. Some people it's side, some people it's side. I think I pretty much got everybody in the room with that, right? Mm -hmm. At least one. So um, uh, most likely 
if this feels better for you, you're gonna probably stay here a little bit more, right? If this feels better, you're gonna probably be here a little bit more or some combination of all of that, okay? So working on getting yourself out of those positions into a more aligned posture is very, very important. Um, but what's that S word right here? If someone could read that to me, I can't really, can't really see it. Strengthening. Strengthening, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredibly important, okay? Most of us think that, oh, if I just stretch and do this, like, I'll be fine. Well, yes, you might feel a little bit more limber for a little bit, but research suggests that that's not gonna stick. You need to supplement that with some strength training, mm -hmm. which means doing functional activities like lifting things from the ground. If you have osteoporosis, uh, advanced, and things like that, please be careful when you do those things uh, because that could be uh, damaging if you're not guided by a professional. Um, but you have wonderful professionals here at the Swimming Racket Club, right? Personal trainers, you know, we know, uh, you know of Rudy for sure, who <laughs> worked with some of his clients um, as well. So um, uh, make sure you're being guided in the proper, in, you know, proper way. Mm -hmm. But, I really want to spend a couple minutes putting all of this stuff together. You know, everyone saw me holding on to that. Okay, this is called the tidal tank. This is kind of mimicking uh, someone's grandchild, right? An awkward object like a bag of mulch or something like that in the garden. That's why I really like working with this with my clients, and. What I'm going to do is ask for a volunteer and they're going to pick this up and we're going to work on their form and get them to a good form. Sure. <laughs> you want to take it through? I'm oh, sure, yeah. yeah. There's always one in the room right there. <laughs> I don't, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to pull my hamstring, do I? No, you, you don't want to pull your hamstring. Yeah, no. Make sure that doesn't happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, you want to take it through? You yeah, let's do it. Okay. Pick so it go pick ahead and just pick it up. I won't say anything yet, and then we'll kind of do, we'll do it a few times, and we'll, we'll go through some corrections here. Okay, and then back down. Okay, a couple more times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get him a workout today, too. So. There we go. <laughs> okay, so what I would say, you know, he is, kind of bending into his knees a little bit too much, right? And then the spine is just a little bit rounded. So what's happening is when you go down, you're kind of coming down like this. Yep. So I want you to get those hips back a little bit as you come down, okay? And again, before you go, think about bracing that core. So when you're here, brace the core, keep everything up top stiff, and sit back in your hips a little bit more, okay? I'm gonna come over to this side. Very good. How'd that one look compared to the first couple? Well, they always told us to bend your knees when your hips are up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and your knees yeah. are bending. It's a, but it's a common misperception that Kirk was actually going into. We want him, if you don't mind my touch, we want yeah. him sitting backwards onto his heels a little bit more so that he's lifting with his legs as opposed to his back. Because, how's that feel? Yeah. And I'd say you can sit back just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's better. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Because I was on my heels a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're looking for. That's perfect. Okay. Good. So again, the knees are bending, but I think that's not the best cue uh, that we've put out into society. Because when everyone thinks of bending their knees, what do they think of? This. Yeah. This, kind of dropping, right? So, well, so you're saying not keep your back straight? You are keeping your back straight, but it's coming at an angle. So my body is now at an angle, but it is straight. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all depending on what straight, straight means to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we'll say my back is flat. Flat, um, yeah. Is that better? Okay. Um, my back is flat as I lift, okay? Mm -hmm. But if we do 
this and try to keep it, we'll call this straight, yeah. it becomes a lot more challenging. You actually can't get to the ground as well. And everyone has different levers, so it might be. You actually picked it up with your legs, I think. Uh, you, how, yes. Yeah, how I just pick up something? Exactly. It's with my legs. This is all coming from my legs. I feel nothing in my back. My hands are just cables. You know, they're, they're not doing anything. Because this is all coming from my legs, all the power from there. Okay? And that's how we protect our backs. Because if I lift it like this, that doesn't look very good, right? Yeah, probably not. And then if I lift like this, it's okay, it's just a lot more awkward. And guess what? I'm now back here. Mm -hmm. In this position, I could do whatever I want. I could even drop it, and I'm, I'm grounded, if you yeah. will. What's the weight of that right now? What's the weight? What's the weight? Uh, it's about 20, 25 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if anyone would like, please feel free to, uh, to use it after the presentation, just to see, because 25 pounds here, just like a 25 pound baby, feels a lot heavier than a dumbbell or some kind of, some kind of weight, correct? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you, Kurt. You're welcome. Yeah. Again, uh, real quick, just kind of a couple prevention type um, techniques here. So you mentioned listening to your body. So paying attention to these symptoms. You know, if something is nagging the back, or uh, you know, it's kind of. It's always there, you know, that's, that's when it's time to take the steps. And actually, it's usually time to take the steps before you feel symptoms. We prefer when our clients come in, uh, when they're not injured, that's actually the best time you could start some physical therapy or um, see a professional just to get things checked out and make sure you're moving correctly, okay? But listen to your body, absolutely. Don't let something continue to nag because all that micro stress adds up over time, okay? And proper warm-ups and cool-downs, stretching, and these are important, um, but they aren't a fix. So it can help with injury prevention and just you know making things feel better. But strengthening, as we said, is kind of number one um, for prevention and for getting out of pain. So other things we list: nutrition, hydration. Um, you know, I'm sure you've heard that many times before. So um, we've talked about the posture, ergonomics, and um, a variety of exercise. So. There's actually been a lot of research of people with um, chronic low back pain that actually do just as good with some corrective exercise as other extra forms of exercise like biking or walking. So number one goal is just to get back moving again. So we used to be taught, hey, let's rest, right? Oh, my back went out. Go bed rest for a week, two weeks. Um, that's actually can be more detrimental. So, we're talking about proper guided movements, even if it's just a walk. So if you throw your back out, you know, get out and do a walk, see how it feels, that's gonna be much better to kind of get you back on the right track, okay? Before you leave it, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, it says uh, exercises or stretching. What stretching are you recommending? So I think there's a few things that we um, listed in the exercise program that we're sending out. Um, but with the lumbar spine, uh, the movements we measure and we assess often are good stretches. So again, when we talk about flexing the lumbar spine, okay, so doing something where you're bending forward or rolling a ball out, doing some extension, um, bending to the side, and even doing some rotation. So these are the classic movements of the spine, especially the lumbar spine. And so even just doing some of those things uh, can be helpful. But there's certainly hamstrings, hip flexors, the glutes, the piriformis we mentioned, so a lot of different muscles we could kind of work through. And some of those are listed in the exercise program that we um, will be sending out to everybody. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it's about how you're doing these things, you know, because everyone knows the basic stretches, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but us activating our core, engaging some of those muscles while we're doing some of those stretches, it now turns into, well, technically a strengthening exercise, which is good, and to my point before about how important strengthening is mm -hmm. to the stretching, right? Um, yeah. And so you're getting a two for one. Who doesn't want that, right? Yeah. Good yeah, question. Um, with the nutrition, I keep getting these notices, you know, food that people with arthritis shouldn't eat, and they never get to the point. 
Absolutely. And what I'd say is definitely nutritionists and certain, um, you know, naturopaths and people that we work with are definitely the experts on, in that realm. So um, there certainly are foods that contribute to inflammation and other things like that. So I, we always recommend and we have like a good community of, you know, nutritionists and people we work with who are kind of the experts in, um, you know, helping with your diet and making sure you're on the right kind of uh, plan there. Yeah, because what, what might be good for you? or what might be good for one person might not be good for you, right? Yeah. It's very yeah. individualized, and that's why it's difficult, right? And that's why we have, you know, the epidemics we're having, you know, here in, uh, in America with obesity and all of those types of things, right? Because it's, it's very difficult to find something that fits, um, that fits everybody. It's next to impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, question. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So the question was, do, do we recommend Pilates? I absolutely love Pilates. It's a very um, kind of low load, I would say, low stress, and it's there's a lot of core um, work in Pilates. So the only caveat I would say is that um, a lot of Pilates classes are group classes. So I just would be cautious because some of the movements can be pretty advanced. So um, if you can, uh, you know, it's a little more expensive to take a private class, but highly recommended. There's a lot of great Pilates instructors take you through a private class before maybe doing a group class so that you can kind of get the movements down and see what works for you, just so you're not trying something that's too difficult. Uh, but love Pilates, so. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Of course. I saw something upset, ice or heat. Mm -hmm. I threw my back out before I got on the plane. Ice on yep. I've been rooting, I've worked with Rudy now, and he's telling me to put heat on it, so I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no one ever has known what to do with that, right? So the research would say that neither really do anything. So, yeah, so um, as, the, as far as physiologically, right, so we're not changing the tissues, um, we're not even really reducing a lot of inflammation a lot of the times with ice, so a lot of times it's like, hey, Let's do this, but it, um, it certainly can help with symptoms. So clinically, I've certainly told a lot of people to ice for a more acute injury because it helps with pain. Now, you know, the body's gonna go through that inflammatory process, that's what's supposed to happen. Now with heat, again, we kind of look at heat as far as, okay, let's increase blood flow or let's, um, you know, get the muscles to loosen up a little bit, which certainly uh, maybe it does happen. There's no like proven research that shows that, but I've seen it work for people. So what I always tell people, you know, I tend to lean more if it's an acute injury, ice it for pain. If it's stiff or kind of a chronic injury, throw some heat on it, but you certainly can try either and you probably aren't really gonna hurt it if, you know, a whole lot if you, if you do it, so. Yeah, yeah, so the goal is relief of symptoms really, right? So if something is hurting, and heat or ice is, you know, you have it and you want to use it, see how it feels, if it helps, and, and that's good. And then I would say seek out a professional, obviously, after that, and kind of they can see your symptoms or um, adjust, like, as needed. What okay. about taking a leave? A leave. Ah. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. Well, it's an anti-inflammatory, right? So it, it does reduce inflammation. But if we really want to reduce that inflammation, I'm not so sure. Again, the body, when it it gets inflamed a lot of times that's that, that's the normal healing process so a lot of times it's a good thing um, for recovering from that injury and we certainly don't recommend or try to avoid using any sort of medication if we can but sometimes it is needed so yeah okay any other questions here okay so um we just want to talk just a little bit about um our model here, Autoness Physical Therapy. So this is our patient pathway that we go through um, with all of our patients and our clients. Um, really, we just talk about getting people, you know, from our pain to performance uh, model, right? So everyone kind of starts here in our recover phase. We work on ideally reducing pain. Then we get in the restore phase and kind of correct those movement faults. And then hopefully we're getting to advanced phase, kind of beyond 100%, getting you back to things you love doing you know, playing pickleball, playing tennis, doing all that kind of stuff. 